My name is Tova, ceramic artist and owner of Shop St. Florence. So there's been a few things that have been on my mind and I have a question for you guys. Do you have a question if your art is good enough? Because that's something I've been definitely pondering lately and questioning myself about. And I believe the biggest mistakes I've been experiencing along the way with selling my art has been valuing my self-worth. So why is this a problem? I believe we miss out on the best opportunities because we lack self-confidence in our art and selling our art and in showcasing and in the, even just focusing on the business side of art. So if you're worried about selling your art or promoting yourself, I want to share a few motivating tips to artists to help motivate you and help give you the confidence to sell your work. The same confidence that you use to develop and create your work should also be applied to the confidence of selling your work. As I share, we'll be walking through the past actually couple weeks of what I've been working on and so you'll kind of see like the day in the life of me and as I'm prepping to open up my shop and also like I'm just helping build out my studio right now so I've been working on um, installing some furniture and yeah, you'll see. You'll see. So recently I've decided to relaunch my ceramic shop and I've started researching where I want to sell at and where I want to show my work and and I've been looking into like my favorite boutique stores and asking if they wanted to sell my ceramics there at the shops. At one particular shop I visited, um, I walked in with a lack of confidence uh, and I was worried that I was just immediately going to get rejected. It turns out the business owner actually really liked my work. However, when it came down to asking what the price of my work was, they said it was too high. And I was a bit taken aback by that because, well, one, I actually, I mean, with the lack of confidence, I lowered my price at that moment. And, and so hearing that they thought that my number was too high and also knowing that there is, you know, 50% commission on top of that, it's like, I think it is very much a reasonable price or if not higher. And so to hear that it was too high kind of frustrated me. At that point of the conversation, I kind of shifted into trying to pitch like my expenses, the operations I've the operational expenses and the time that it takes you know there's like the bisque square fire and then there's the glazing fire and the whole process of it and I kind of stopped myself because I realized that 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 this business owner did not value my worth and I was wasting my time I left the shop contemplating whether my art was good enough from for my desired price point um, and even whether I should be selling my work. So the first step I wanted to share with you is building confidence, whether it's in your price point, the style or showing off your work. How can you do that? And, and, and I think that confidence is a skill. Uh, I think of like a CEO who has to share like their elevator pitch within a certain amount of seconds and they are usually really enthusiastic and confident about their work and they're sharing it usually to investors to find people who can invest in them and help them grow in their business. And I think we should apply that as artists as well. So whether you are selling in a small boutique store or participating in a craft fair, I think we also need to be just as enthusiastic about how we present our work because our end consumers are our investors. We're, they're our advocates and they they kind of help provide validation and, and, and also it kind of gives you like a proof point that your work is good enough. So I need to see, so I need to speak more highly of myself and 
um, I'm hoping you can speak more highly of yourself too and like repeating your values and even actually believing in your self-worth. I love this quote, I am the measure of my worth and I say I am worthy. So let me speak this for myself. I am a ceramic artist relaunching my small business. I find value in work through the stories I tell through each piece, through a therapeutic experience I get from making each piece, and through the community I get from the process and, and even just like sharing my story. I am Shop St. Florence. Building confidence is taking action, moving from theory to practice. It doesn't matter if you say you will do something or write a strategy or a plan, if you don't actually take the action on doing that idea, it is just an idea stuck in your head. Here are some questions to consider as you test and validate. Do you need to test your art at different prices? Um, what about validating what sells? What sells quicker? What are you willing to price at a store knowing that there's a certain percentage taken out for commission from the store? Are you trying to sell at a craft fair? Will your total sales cover the vendor fee? And um, have you factored in the time and energy that you are um, spending at that craft fair? Like setting up or taking down and even just developing your art? And is your goal to make a profit or just build an audience? I do think it's a unique challenge to start a craft and also be a business person. Being a business person means recognizing that you may experience more rejections and that sucks. So let's say a buyer or a boutique owner may have a different confidence in you than you see in yourself. You have to ask, how can you show a client you have value? And how can you fully trust in your self-worth? So I think you should trust your intuition, first of all. If the seller provides less than feedback on your price point, keep it moving. Go to stores where your work is valued. Your target audience and your consumers should also be informed of your price point. So if that store that you go to is not somewhere where your target audience would shop, then what's the point of even selling there? And then I think we need to also recognize that the buyer's perspectives may differ from yours. The buyer may be looking to fill a gap in their sales strategy, or they might be even finding something that's more meaningful to them in like a personal connection. So one, release humiliation. Not every buyer is meant to buy your work, and not every buyer is your target audience. Two, see yourself as valuable. A community target audience who is enthusiastic about your art has like-minded values. Okay, I also want to mention cheap doesn't mean your artwork lacks value. So if your target audience is only willing to spend, let's say, $24 for a mug, let's like remap how much one time we spend on on making that mug and to reevaluate the budget of your operational expenses. So as an artist, if time and detail are deeply embedded in your craft and your prices, then your prices need to be higher than the average price of the piece. Consider redefining your brand story and building your target audience to meet the needs of your craft. In saying this, I personally find conflict in wanting to sell things that are accessible and also functional artwork. Still, I also want to make things that are beautiful, timeless, and premium, and have that exclusive feel. The custom places I make are one of a kind, and 
my city's cost of living is is, is expensive and um, I, I think things are priced a bit higher than a lot of different parts of the country. Um, and then I also recognize that I feel like I have a unique style to the work I do and I try to make things that are a bit one of a kind and not copycats of other people. So I decided in my shop relaunch that I wanted to meet these two types of people. So we had type one, functional mugs and pots that are vibrant and cute, pieces that are accessible in price, and they're also collectibles. They might have fun patterns like leopard prints and smiley faces. It brings people joy, and it, it kind of just reminds me of when I was a child, I really loved Lisa Frank. And, and then also just for type one, as far as like, this style, I went with more conventional commercial glazes that I loved. So type two, I think of this as like functional and art objects for timeless spaces. These are like tabletop conversation starters and this type of person is invested in their home. And so I think of like custom minimalistic glazes that provide a story behind each and every piece. Uh, the pieces are tableware like cups, mugs, plates, bowls, fruit bowls. It's a set usually, vases, um, and also other random objects and art objects. Also, you should do research on the places where you want to sell. Is this where your target audience is? Are there other serving pieces similar to yours in the store? What are the prices? What is the style technique? Was it made by a bowl? What's the level of detail? What does the trim look like? And then there's also like the acknowledgement of experience that I think we need to recognize too. In evaluating and comparing the prices of other pieces, do you recognize that you could fine tune your work to even improve a bit more? Do you see an opportunity to push your artwork further? Do you have your own unique story to tell to make your brand stand out? Realistically, as I reflect on that shop that I went to, I didn't feel that they valued my work the same way I did. I now recognize the shop that I was at was not where I should have been even selling my work at. That shop felt like an easy win, but the style didn't fit into my two audience types I plan to appeal to. So my tip here is not to let other people's negative comments take up space and have free rent in your mind because that's what i definitely did so i want you to think even bigger than what you were dreaming if you were worried that you may not even have an audience to sell online or in stores create that space for yourself so and you might be like well what does that look like i can't even get into like a craft fair it's too expensive i only have a few couple followers on my Instagram or YouTube. So one thing I'm wanting to do and I and I like invite others to do this too is create a small pop-up with friends in your house. Promote that you are starting your own business or that you're you're trying to launch something. It's like a launch pop-up. Just create some sort of event where you can promote and and share this to your community online. This way it can like hype up people and it can hype up your friends. It can hype up a larger community to share that like you are really invested in this. And, and it also gets like your friends and your family and your community excited at the same time for you. So when you do this, make sure you express it with confidence and maybe even be a little bit vulnerable this, that you need support from your community. Don't be afraid to ask for help. A friend may have a connection to like a boutique store and that might be a great gateway for you. Or you might find by expressing your vulnerability that you might meet another artist who's also looking for space in that same craft fair and y'all can split that, split that booth, which makes it feel not so out of reach. Also be prepared to negotiate your value. So if you're in like a boutique store, Next time, think about how you can even just go in with some points, just some bullet points so you are ready to be like, this is what I'm worth, this is what I expect, and what is it that you are willing to negotiate? Commission, your time, 
the amount of pizzas in the store. And I hope you can do this by having the confidence to start taking risks and invest in yourself. Thank you for watching this video. It's been a work of love and me being vulnerable and sharing my art process to you. Let me know how you are navigating and selling your art and some of the ways you are building confidence in your self-worth. I hope to see you again soon. Bye.